<laughs> hey boys. Let's go work out. Let's do it. Go. Mama, Papa, gonna do fitness, okay? All right, guys, here we are. It is Tuesday and it is Coaches Roundtable Day. This is episode number 12 of the Street Parking Coaches Roundtable. Today, as we are sitting here filming this, it is March 30th, 2021, which means we have one more day left of March. And on April 1st, it is not a joke. It is not an April Fool's trick at all. We will start what we in Street Parking call hashtag project april um project april is a month where in the street parking community we encourage all of our members even those who have access to a full gym or have super decked out garage gyms to use only their dumbbells for an entire month now that could be program a which is typically our dumbbell version or it could also be shift which i think a lot of people don't know about that but shift also counts for project april because for shift all you need is a single kettlebell a single dumbbell or a pair of light dumbbells so all of those workouts will count as well um a little bit of a backstory on project april do you remember how it started? Because it was just the two of us, well, and Frank, of course, when Project April started. Um, from what I remember, I think that we were finding ways to, was it to kind of keep people motivated and to push through after, like, was it the uh, the new year and stuff and the falling off of the motivation? So, actually, the way that I remember it, it was 2018. We had just moved uh, here to Vancouver, Washington, and um, we started seeing a lot as the group was growing, um, we had started seeing a lot of people referring to program A, B, and C, which in the street parking community, program A is the dumbbell version. Pro program B is if you have a little bit more equipment, maybe a barbell, typically that's where you're going to see the barbell um, thrown in. And program C is where you have access to like everything. What we had started seeing is people referring to those as levels and referring to the dumbbell version as the easy version and even kind of like talking about their own workouts as oh i all i did was the dumbbell version that's all i have so i'm te technically doing the easy version and we were like hold on we've never thought of it that way that's never been the intention the intention has always been to just do different variations of the same workout um depending on the equipment that you have and showing you how to make it work and we know, and many of you guys know, who have done Project April or who have done a lot of our workouts with dumbbells, know that oftentimes the dumbbell version is worse, harder, uh, more challenging, pick a word there, I guess, than the regular version. So we decided, because we do have, I mean, we have an excessive amount of equipment at our house. <laughs> Jeb has a lot of equipment, Alex not so much, but she's even got you know more than just dumbbells. Um, and we were constantly, you know, rotating which equipment we were using in our workouts. So we wanted to kind of prove a point by saying, we know that dumbbells are only enough. So for a whole month, we're only going to use our dumbbells to prove to you guys that we believe that it's enough and to prove that it's not the easier version. And that if that's all we had, this is what we would be doing and we'd be a hundred percent okay with it. And that's kind of where it started. It, and we didn't actually like make it a community thing. We just put it on the Facebook group. And of course, in street parking fashion, the comments come flooding in like, I'm in, I'll do it too. Yeah, I'll do this. And so that's kind of how it was born. And it was uh, 2018. So today we came and uh, Project April is two days out and we've got a bunch of people participating. We've got a bunch of new members who have joined. 
Um, and we wanted to talk about four reasons, whether you're a street parking member or not, that you should challenge yourself to something similar to Project April, where you're going to strip down all of the equipment that you think that you need and only do your fitness with a pair of dumbbells for a whole month. Uh, and we're going to dive into how that might change your fitness, your mindset, and just, you know, how you approach all of this stuff. So we'll dive right into it. First one, and this one that is a long list. Okay. Um, but right out of the gates, there are a lot of physical benefits to training with dumbbells specifically over some of the other options, machines, bars, that types of things. So Jeb, kick it off with some of your, or maybe one of your favorite physical benefits of training with dumbbells. Okay, so um, probably there's so many, but I think probably my favorite is just the the increased muscle activity that is required with a dumbbell. Because both arms are free and not connected to the same object, you then have to stabilize those objects independently. And so at lower resistance or less weight, you actually, your muscles have to work a little bit harder and, and work in new ways if you're not used to that. So um, like for example, probably five or six years ago, when I owned a gym in Los Angeles and gyms in the middle of Los Angeles, like you're working with a very small space. And so full disclosure, I decided to go get a ton of dumbbells because I was trying to reduce the footprint of the people um, in the in the classes so I could actually get a decent class size going. And the dumbbells just crushed people. They weren't used to it. They were used to working with barbells and like they couldn't at the beginning work with anywhere near the same load. So a lot of times in program A, the combined weight of the dumbbells is less than in program B, but the stimulus is just as you know, uh, impressive, if not more so, because the muscles are having to, to work in new and different ways to try to negotiate and manage those dumbbells. So that's kind of like my favorite part. All right, Alex, what you got? Um, one of the things I appreciate the most about dumbbells is that they help to correct any imbalances that you might have from like left to right, because with a barbell, and even with the sandbag, any any like connected object, there's places to hide, you know, like I can hide if I have a, a slightly weaker left arm versus my right because my right can compensate for that because the weight is connected. Whereas you put independent loads in each of my hands and that just gets exposed really quickly. But it's also the best way to improve those things. So while it might feel like... Um, it's exposing you, you're, you're doing everything that you can or should be doing to correct those imbalances and bring that left side up to meet where the right side is. Okay, what about you? What's your favorite thing? Uh, physical. For physical, yeah, I would just say like the uh, correction of the imbalances that you may have, right? So, you know, I'm more um, left side dominant, so I think it definitely put me in a position where it helped me strengthen up my right side, you know, and I, I thought that was really good. And I noticed the benefits of that. I mean, I've noticed them a long time ago since we've been training with dumbbells and uh, I really enjoy that aspect of it. For me, I think um, there's a lot more carryover into how you're going to use your fitness in your real life. Um, because like Jeb was saying, it's not. So when you pick up a barbell off the ground, it's, how many inches exactly off the ground is it? I want to say it's like seven inch or something like that off the ground exactly every single time you pick it up and you grab it and it's got the knurling and it spins. And then when you're doing like a front squat with it, it's resting on your body perfectly balanced. And it's not like, I mean, we've all had that experience with the dumbbells where it's like, how do I comfortably like get these things and where do I put them and everything. And I think especially since having kids, I'm like carrying one in this arm up here and I'm carrying another one down here on my hip and I'm like trying to hold the groceries at the same time and having two objects that I got to figure out how to maneuver around is much more applicable to how you're going to use your body in real life. And now before I even started doing CrossFit style training, I was more of like a machine person. 
And I didn't, I had actually a really hard time gaining mass. I know this is gonna be hard to believe in my upper body using machines. Um, and it wasn't until I started doing a lot of body weight stuff and a lot of stuff with dumbbells um, that I gained more muscle in my upper body. And I think, again, it comes down to body control. It comes down to the, the objects being, you know, not moving in this like perfectly set plane of movement. Like I had to, there's a coordination element with dumbbells that is definitely not there with any sort of machines and is even not there quite as much with um, a barbell. So there are so many physical benefits to training with dumbbells. And I think, you know, one misconception that we should talk about before we move on to the next thing is a lot of times people think that because they're lighter and I can't, I can't load up a deadlift or a squat or, you know, a clean and jerk with dumbbells with the same amount of weight that I could with a barbell. So there's this misconception a lot of times I think that people think that they can't get strong or they can't gain muscle mass using dumbbells. What would you guys say to that or how would you explain that that's not the case? Oh man, I might, you might have to help me out with this, but what Jeb was saying before, like it requires more muscle activation. Strength is not, when I use a barbell, maybe I only activate a certain number of muscle fibers like in the muscle groups that I'm using but I I only ever do that because I'm having to stabilize a load in like probably one additional plane of motion with dumbbells I'm having to recruit more musculature like literally activate more muscle fibers in the muscle groups that I'm using so I'm getting stronger like in a more um like in a wider range I think like I'm expands expanding the the value of my muscles without having to actually gain more muscle you know does that make sense yeah it's like a it's a it's a neurologic thing right. where you're like teaching your body to again it's coordination at the end of the day like without getting super sciencey nerdy and actually i've seen some posts um even just recently i think i saw one last night where the one of our members said i've only been doing program a so that's dumbbells and i pr'd my clean and jerk the other day, like when I randomly went to my old gym and it's like in your mind, it's like, how does that happen? Well, a lot of it is a coordination element and it's a neurologic thing where your body's just becoming more um, efficient and more coordinated in the movement where you go back to the barbell well, where now it's much easier to control and your body's just moving more efficiently. Yeah, one other thing too that um, Alex had brought up was grip and working with the dumbbells will challenge your grip in different ways and there's been tons and tons of research that shows that there's a relationship between your grip and your overall strength um, and so being able to hold on to something being able to to grip something tighter like if you're pra if you're training with dumbbells and your grip improves that right there could have a huge impact for the better on something like a, a max effort clean and jerk. Um, one other thing that I think we should mention though is because of that, the, the change in the grip, if you switch to using dumbbells exclusively and you've not really been using dumbbells at all, um, that can have some implication on your tendons and connective tissues. So it's really, really important to recover properly and take care of like your forearms and your elbows mm -hmm. because they can definitely start to sting a little bit if you go right into a whole bunch of dumbbell stuff. Yeah, and I think we noticed that um, not when we did Project April because we were a few years into street parking and had been using dumbbells a lot, but when we first started doing street parking programming and we were using dumbbells more than normal, we saw that a little bit. Now, if you're participating in Project April, don't turn this into like a challenge where I have to get through it even if I'm like, you know, super duper sore or in pain. If you, we want you guys doing the dumbbell version more often than you normally would. If that's not for every single workout or if there's one that pops up where you're just like, ah, I really want my dumbbell or my barbell, it's okay. You're not like, you know, gonna get kicked out of the group or anything like that. Um, speaking of the forearms thing, funny story. When I, before I had this, you know, beautiful man next to me. One of the ways that I used to like decide if I thought a guy was good looking, this is too much information, but the people like this kind of stuff. 
I would look at their forearms. And if, because I came from bodybuilding background where a lot of dudes would get strong using machines. And so if you got like this huge like chest and back and then I look at your forearms and they're puny, I'm like, mm, not for me. You know, anyways, <laughs> he's got great forearms. Um, I remember the one of the places that people are going to be super sore if they're used to their barbell, so I'm just going to throw it out there, is it's going to be your hamstrings and potentially your lower back because you're going to be pulling from a much deeper um, pull than with your barbell. The, the dumbbells, to touch them to the ground in something like a deadlift or a clean or even a dumbbell snatch, it's you're going to be bending further. Make sure that you guys use proper technique. Don't get sloppy. And um, just know that that's to kind of to be expected. Those hamstrings are going to be feeling it at first for sure. All right, kind of moving on. And we've we've hinted at this a little bit when we're talking about, you know, loving your barbell or loving what you're used to is number two, too many options. We know we have way too many options in street parking for some people sometimes. <laughs> um, too many options can sometimes be a bad thing. Now, in street parking, we give you guys all of the options with the sole purpose of we believe consistency is the most important thing that you need to be in control of your fitness. And we don't think that you need to fit into one specific type of workout to be fit for your life and to enjoy the health benefits. So we provide you with a bunch of options, whether it's you know the equipment options or the extra programs or the accessories. Hey, pick something and just be consistent. Um, but... We also know that too many options can sometimes be a bad thing. So let's talk about some ways that sometimes this can have a negative effect. So, okay, I'll, I'll say one of them. Um, and this is one that I fall into a lot because I do have a fully decked out garage gym. And if I go out there, especially when I am maybe trying to test workouts or come up with new workouts, or maybe just do my own thing. Sometimes I'll just sit there and look at all of my stuff and just be like, oh, I want to do this. And then I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And then it's like, well, wait, that's too many things. What do I want to take out? And 20 minutes have gone by and I haven't done anything. So um, just creating this singular focus for a month to remind ourselves that like, oh, hey, this is it. I'm limiting my options. Now I take out so many other things that could get in the way of me and my workout and ultimately my fitness. It just makes things a lot more simple and easier to just, the, the road to fitness becomes a lot shorter that way. Yeah. You take away your option to cherry pick as well. You know, I think a lot of times when we do workouts, <clears throat> if you only had the options to do dumbbells, a lot of times we tend to avoid, as we get older too, we tend to avoid the things that we don't like doing. Mm. Working out with dumbbells could be one of them. You know, for some of us, like, perfect example, males, we suck at, like, step-ups, dumbbell step-ups and certain movements with the dumbbells, right? Um, and so doing, it's, I, what I really appreciated about, what I actually appreciate about Project April for all the years that we've done it is that it keeps me focused on you know just staying the course with the dumbbells and i come out after the month feeling really good and that i've developed more as uh, as an individual when it comes to my fitness because i've worked on the weaknesses that i've purposely been avoided throughout the year right so a lot of the times i'll see dumbbell step ups and i'll try to be like no i'm just gonna work on my i'm gonna grab a sandbag it's more convenient i'm gonna throw it on my over the back because i just don't want to work on my grip and no uh, it's uncomfortable but a lot of the times it's me running away from making the workout more challenging. I'm giving you guys Easter eggs here to challenge me on dumbbell step ups. So <laughs> things like that. Um, but when I really committed to it, it, like I said, did make me a better person. And, you know, I remember when I first doing dumbbell step ups you used to absolutely, I mean, any kind of dumbbell workout, you would just take it away for sure. And, you know, now I got to tell you, dumbbells is one of those things where you really give me a go all the time and I really appreciate it, you know? And so it, there's just constant work to be, uh, had and, uh, project April is just like the perfect start to keep me in the course to avoid all these other distractions like the barbell and the sandbag. Yeah. The cherry picking is a, is a big one. And anyone who's been a member of street parking for, I don't know, even like six months who has access to all of the equipment, you'll look at a workout and you'll immediately know which one 
it's not that it's an easier version again, but it's the more, it's the version that sounds more fun or is more comfortable. So there, for example, I hate pulling dumbbells from the ground. Um, I don't hate it, but I would much prefer to do power cleans, deadlifts, that kind of thing with a barbell. Um, first of all, because it's not down as far as we mentioned before, it's going to spin nicely when I do my little power clean, it's going to land on my shoulders. I'm going to feel super cool about it. The elbows are going to come, you know, it it's a I, I enjoy a power clean with the barbell more than the dumbbells. So as soon as I see that's one of the movements or one of the main movements, <clears throat> this is another Easter egg potentially for a workout coming up soon. Um, you it's it's a barbell. You're going to gravitate toward the barbell there. Are the, I prefer actually now I love a devil press but I love a sandbag burpee even more, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, oh, maybe I'll do the sandbag. That sounds fun. It's never, that sounds harder. Yep, I'm gonna do that version because that sounds harder. No one ever says that. So again, kind of like combining both of those things, it's like, we're just gonna take, we're gonna encourage you to take the options away for a little bit. And no matter what pops up, because that's life, right? Life pops up and you're like, well, this is what I've got and this is what I've got to work with. And so many members actually only have dumbbells and they love Project April because they see all of us not giving ourselves the other options that we normally have and experiencing street parking the way that they do. And it's really fun for that reason. You know, another thing that I've actually noticed too when it comes to the dumbbells is, uh, oh, where was I gonna go? Cause I was kept, Remember what I was going to say. Um, there's, it's easier to go harder with dumbbells, and I think that is scary for me because when it comes to program B, you know, I could easily look at a workout and be like, you know what, I'm going to go heavier on purpose to slow me down. You get very limited quickly when you try to go heavier on dumbbells, right? Um, so a lot of the times with the weights that we've programmed with a 40 pound dumbbell, and and the movements aren't as technical either, right? With the barbell. There's a lot, a lot of technique that, you know, goes into a barbell movement because of, you know, you have to move the whole unit as one, whereas opposed to the dumbbell, it's, you know, a lot of the times it's a lot easier to maneuver a dumbbell. And that's why a lot of the times when people are entering into fitness, it's, it's better to just kind of show them movement with the dumbbell first. It's less intimidating. You can stick to a lighter weight and know that the person's probably still going to get a really, really good workout. So that's another thing, to be honest, I'll look at a dumbbell working and be like, no way, I'm not feeling intensity today and i know with the dumbbell options it's gonna wreck me and i am not feeling it today so yeah dumbbells to me is actually the the one version that is guaranteed always intensity for me yeah i think that's a really good point and something that we didn't talk about in the physical benefits but is really important to note is that um dumbbells are where we know that they're difficult and we know because we're comfortable with the barbell that it's going to wreck us or whatever they are less intimidating to the general population to my parents for example my parents do street parking they do the shift workouts they don't own a barbell i will never encourage them to own a barbell my mom doesn't need to be doing cleans and snatches <laughs> and things like that with the barbells she's got her dumbbells she's got a kettlebell and she crushes it and she's comfortable with it um they are less technical i mean they're still technical because we were talked about, you know, some of the um, neurologic like adaptations that are made with dumbbells. But at the same time, because you're not moving a barbell around, you know, moving your body around a barbell, it's um, people see squat cleans with a barbell and it's Olympic lifting. It's like, oh, my gosh, like this is the Olympics. And then you see the dumbbells or even a sandbag for that matter. And it's just more inviting. It's less intimidating it is not easier when you're doing it so if you only have dumbbells and you only use dumbbells don't think that what you're doing is easier you're 100 percent crushing it you're doing all you need to do and um but that is a that is an important physical benefit that we didn't mention yeah because i mean if you think about it naturally if you stand up we stand with our hands to our sides mm -hmm. and that's how you hold the dumbbell so when you throw in the barbell now you're shifting what's natural to you going from here to here that's a whole nother you know mechanics that you now you're having to learn so for the everyday person you're picking an object up like this so the way you would grip a dumbbell usually as opposed to a barbell right it's easier to hold something this way than it is to hold something this way right so uh, yeah there's something to you know that's one of the many physical benefits to it you know what else you can't do with the dumbbell well you can but i you probably don't want to do this drop it, drop it from overhead 
So your strategy changes in these workouts, right? Like uh, earlier, well, I guess it was on Friday, Molly and I were doing Aphrodite with the um, snatches and the clean and jerks. And her clean and jerk, she was using the dumbbells and I had the bar. Her sets of clean and jerks were bigger. Well, first of all, because she's Molly. But also because, you know, she said, I saw you over there doing the clean and jerks and dropping the bar and I was so jealous. You end up strategizing the workout different. You end up attacking it different. You end up uh, with more grip strength partially just because you do bigger sets and you hold on to them for longer. So, I mean, the physical benefits again are endless, but let's move on to number three. Number three is dumbbells provide convenience and they also help to build consistency. So let's talk about the convenience factor first. And I think Alex is the best one to speak on this because of your current home gym situation. Oh, yes. I actually posted recently that I like, because I'm, I call it lazy, <laughs> let's call it efficient. Um, like I just don't, a lot of, I work out in the morning a lot of times and I honestly don't feel like setting up my barbell. So I call it lazy, but grabbing my dumbbells, it's so quick, simple, take them out. Putting them away is so much easier. So like going back to what Jeb was saying, like reducing the time that I'm literally spending on my fitness it might be, you know, it's, it's maybe it's negligible. I don't know, but breaking down a barbell, putting a barbell together for me is like just more time that I don't need to spend on my fitness today. Um, so that, and then also I work out on hardwood floors, which I get a lot of flack about, but, um, I mean, dumbbells are great for that because I can't drop them from overhead. Like it's not an option. So, and they're, you know, well, I have the rubber hex dumbbells too, so that's nice. Um, but with a barbell, I'm far more tempted to want to drop it. And so, yeah, just using dumbbells is way more convenient for me in my current situation. So, um, where I started to grow a love and an understanding for how potent and convenient both of those things that dumbbells could be was uh, for eight years, I traveled so much. And when you go to a hotel gym, I've actually seen two hotel, two hotel gyms that had Olympic bars, like bars that spun and plates and everything. There's one in Mexico um, that we've seen and then there's one somewhere else. Um, but hotel gyms, typically they're gonna have dumbbells only. And sometimes, the, I mean, you're lucky if you even find a good selection of those. Um, and so because I was traveling so much and fitness is a part of my identity and a part of my life and who I am and consistency is important to me, um, I was doing two workouts a week sometimes with, uh, dumbbells only. And so this was long before street parking. It's probably part of why street parking happened in the first place. I, I know, actually know that it is. Um, and so for convenience factor and kind of, kind of segueing into consistency, uh, I knew how I, I've learned how to use them. And so I didn't ever see, I've never seen the dumbbell version as a different workout. It's just a different version to me. And so when I had a workout planned or I had, you know, a, co a coach back in the day that would tell me what to do for my workout, I would just go see what the hotel gym had and, and grab a pair of dumbbells and do it and do it with that. I know a lot of our members, so we obviously have a garage. Jeb has a garage. Alex is doing the workouts in her house. We have a ton of members who do their workouts literally like at the foot of their bed in their bedroom. Um, we have people who are doing it out on their little like back patio in an apartment where it's very small. Uh, people that, I mean, we I've seen a lot of parents who have a kid in the hospital or something like that where they're, they took their dumbbells over to the hospital and they're doing it in the parking lot or they're doing it in their kids hospital room uh, teachers have been doing it in their classrooms yeah the the teachers like in between their like online school are like doing it in their classrooms so convenience factor to add to convenience factor let's talk about price mm. for dumbbells versus a barbell and plates and all of that stuff yeah i remember when i was when i was coaching people in my backyard i was definitely on a very big budget you know um back in those hustling days Dumbbells was definitely like my go-to because you don't what you don't think about when you want to purchase a barbell is okay. There's just the barbell itself, but then comes the adding of the plates and the weights. So that gets really, really costly so fast. So you're looking at over a thousand dollars just to get like your starter pack set. You know, with dumbbells, 
and it guarantees again the convenience which keeps you consistent you know and you know you're always going to get a good workout in with dumbbells you can go to like any you can usually go to like a target or a big five and you know you're going to find a pair of dumbbells well, it's a little bit of a different story right now there's an exception due to this whole you know um boom in the working out at home industry um but usually yeah you'll be able to find dumbbells at most places walmart target everywhere which just uh, it's great it's you know the rubber hex is definitely the way to go over the metal ones but again it all depends on your budget but you know we can go into the details of those things yeah and i mean some of the dumbbells that we still have at our house are those dumbbells that you used in your backyard and they're metal and they're rusted and they're fine i mean aki uses them all the time she's back there you know yeah, great character <laughs> um so don't feel like of course the rubber dumbbell hex ones are nice but if all you've got or if all you can find is something other than that the th the other thing that i like about dumbbells specifically you know there are some that are not um as bomb proof like you know some of the ones where you can change the weights on them or i remember nicole and rachel they had the ones where you could change the weights what are those things called I think they're called the ones where you can change the weights. What are know. they called, Rachel? Power block, you said? Yeah, where you like put it in the thing and you select which weight and then you pull it out and it's got like, you know. So some of those, you, you could probably break those a little bit easier. But in general, a dumbbell is going to be tough to break. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, have at it with those things. I mean, don't drop it from overhead. But if you do, it's probably not going to break, um, at least not right away. So they'll last forever is kind of what i'm getting at yeah i mean even that right even the durability factor um because obviously when people go full send on workouts and they drop dumbbells from overhead like we've all seen it right at gyms and open workout whatever they'll just like they'll finish work and be like ah and drop it I, I would say that the rubber hex ones have the most durability even over the metal ones the metal ones tend to snap in situations like that more commonly than the rubber hex ones i don't know what the difference is in material to be i don't know what the difference is in the metal that they're using but um the metal ones tend to snap easier in situations like that and they'll just cause way more damage a lot because mm -hmm. and again this is going to dissecting the minor details but even the corners of the hex dumbbells with the metal ones sometimes if you're a beginner and you're you know you're doing a dumbbell snatch and you're just not aware or how you're doing certain movements they'll catch you either on your head or on your shoulders now you're terrifying everyone <laughs> no, no i'm just being real as to like why like you know if you can go you know sh you know Put a little bit more money into the the rubber hex ones just um for those little minor things that will end up catching up over the long term and you'll figure them out the longer you use them so I'm trying to avoid you all these things by just with experience here all right so how what about the consistency so so we've because they're so convenient jeb how does that lead into potentially you as a person being more consistent in your fitness if you've got a pair of dumbbells or if you know how to use dumbbells for your fitness so again, it just, it kind of comes back to like one less thing to get in the way. So if I have a pair of dumbbells and I know that that's all I need, then there's really nothing that's getting in the way of me and using those dumbbells. Uh, the more convenient that we can make it for ourselves to get to our workout, especially when we're talking about from home where you're competing, like your dumbbells are competing with your television and your refrigerator your and your bed, you know, all these other things. So the, the more stuff that we can take away and eliminate and the more simple we can make it as a process for you to just go and start working out, the better. And so having one or two pairs of dumbbells without all of the other stuff makes it easier to do that. And I think the convenience of being able to, like one thing I was thinking about, especially during the, the winter, like sometimes it's really cold in the garage. I don't want to go out there and you can take the dumbbells inside and you could even take the dumbbells inside the night before and then go out to the garage the next morning and they're not freezing cold on your hands. Mm -hmm. So, um, just the, the, the compactness of them, the ability to just take them and work out with them wherever, um, all makes it a lot easier to stay consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, we see, we see a lot of members who, um, when they're going on like a road trip or like a family trip too, where they're driving, 
they'll throw their dumbbells in the back uh, of the car or like in the trunk. I know that we do that. Like when we go to the coast, we'll take just a pair of dumbbells each in the, and throw them in with our luggage in the back of the truck. And then at our Airbnb or whatever, that's it. That's all we need. And we can still do our workouts. There is no blip on the radar of our consistency whatsoever. Um, you know, one of the things that the reason that I had to get over myself with the travel was when I would travel, I would panic if I couldn't find a gym that had like open gym time or a class that I could get to or the equipment that I needed. And I would be like, oh my gosh, like I just can't work out. Well, as soon as I got over that hump of like, no, just save yourself a trip of, tr of you know, calling an Uber driver, trying to get to this place, trying to get there at a certain time, trying to find your little corner, making sure it's not an awkward situation, spend an hour there, Uber back. Like it was just a production every single time. And I would do this on vacation. And it was just like ruining my vacation where pretty much, you know, I found, yeah, I could just do this in the hotel room. I'll be downstairs for 45 minutes and I can just get back to my vacation. No problem. So, um, again, convenience leads to consistency. It also leads to uh, lack of excuses, which sometimes I think people hold on to this idea that um, they need all of that stuff because it it allows them to have an excuse to, oh, I couldn't make it to the gym today because X, Y, Z, so I just can't work out. Well, the problem with us telling you that all you need is a pair of dumbbells is that's no longer valid, which is going to lead us to number four. And I think this is, you know, so important. It's why we started Project April in the first place, not only Project April, but it's why we started street parking in the first place and why you should, again, whether you're a street parking member or not, regardless of how much access of, to equipment you have and regardless uh, how fit you are, if you're super duper, you know, been doing this for years, high, high level fitness, or just starting out, um, why you should train with only dumbbells for a month is because you will not believe it is enough like in your core and know in your heart that it is enough to only train with dumbbells unless you do it for a long enough period of time to say oh my gosh I did this for a month and this is what I learned or this is what happened now if you want to prove us wrong then you should also do it for long enough to prove us wrong because if you're out there saying dumbbells aren't enough you need this 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 and this okay show us by doing a month of dumbbells that we were wrong about it too so that if you want to prove us right or wrong i think that um making sure that you do it for longer than just a week or a few days and uh going for the full month of dumbbells is a way to strengthen that belief or build a new belief um and i want you guys to kind of share uh, i would say especially you because when we started street parking, you were still actively trying to compete in CrossFit. And so you were like not doing as many of the dumbbell versions because you were still very much worried about maintaining barbell strength and this and that to compete. Um, what have you learned through a couple years of doing Project April and just more dumbbell workouts? Has your belief in the effectiveness of dumbbells changed since we started? Again, it just added another layer of intensity in my workouts, and I think that just aerobically um, made me a better work, uh, a better fitnesser, I guess. <laughs> it's like um, it made me stronger for sure. My stamina increased a lot, um, and it kind of it, tra it, trans it transferred over to barbell cycling as well. Um, and and it was just it was it was great. I mean, you were still working out the same muscles as if you were using a barbell, and Again, the volume and reps and the added layer of intensity really helped develop me more as an athlete at the time to now just kind of maintaining my consistency with that has been proven to be really, really effective. So, um, yeah, I, and actually I was going to go back to how cool, like some of the most memorable like dumbbell workouts that we've had have been because they've been so convenient. Like when we went to Jen's wedding and we had like all six of us in there just crushing a dumbbell workout or when we anytime traveled and, you know, uh, with the crew or whatever, and we just went in and took over the hotel gyms and we just busted out the dumbbells and we all hit it with full intensity and we all just crushed it. Um, you know, 
it's true like you know just the convenience led to the consistent consistency and you know obviously believing in the effectiveness of dumbbells it's just been great we've made some hotel gyms very steamy with our groups <laughs> there's never any air in those things <laughs> we're like jumping over like laundry baskets and like stuff like that so it's awesome um jeb what about you what what have you learned through using dumbbells obviously you had a bunch of dumbbells for your gym so it's not like they were new to you with street parking but what have you learned with not only your own fitness with using dumbbells maybe more than you did um, but also just watching the members it's funny i mean this this last point i developed that belief as well um uh, once i really got to see daily the people in the community that are just that are using dumbbells pretty much exclusively all year round and especially during project april i knew that the dumbbell is a very like compelling training tool and all of the physical benefits and stuff but realizing that that's all you need when it comes down to it i mean i i had to see it to believe it and then obviously when i really switched over to, to the street parking programming for a long time. I, I was choosing the dumbbells more than I was choosing anything else because I really liked the stimulus. I liked that it felt like it was something kind of new and different. And, um, and there is a different level of intensity when it comes to dumbbells. So um, I think that's something that I have learned. And I feel like um, just in terms of, of that belief in the confidence, probably the number one excuse that I hear, and I think on some level I'm guilty of as well, but it's these two words that kind of make me a little bit crazy. Life happens. Mm. Yes, of course, like, life is happening right now. Life is never not going to be happening. Are you shocked that life happened and threw you off of your consistency? Was this the first time that it happened? No, and, and it's gonna happen again. So I think that um, doing 30 days of, of dumbbells and, and getting the, the physical benefits and seeing that you can be consistent and seeing that it's actually a lot more simple, coming back to this whole idea of like control your fitness, you know, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated seeing all of that and have it kind of be solidified over the course of 30 days really helps to build that belief and once you have that belief you're not going to all of a sudden it doesn't go away it's now it's there and you have that extra tool that mental tool alex how how often were you using dumbbells in your training before because you joined street parking what has it been to 18 and 18. Oh, so oh, we're almost three years. Mm -hmm. So how often were you using dumbbells before street parking programming versus, and then what have you learned or how has your training or thought process changed since you do, using dumbbells more? Yeah. So basically up until it's been about a year that I've, I wouldn't say exclusively used dumbbells. Um, but especially like in the last six months or so Bef prior to that, I either owned a gym or was a head coach of a gym that had absolutely everything I could possibly need. And dumbbells were not on my radar. Um, I mean, occasionally, but hardly ever did I use them uh, in my own training. And then I feel like this story comes up far too frequently, but w you know, when I moved here, eventually as the pandemic kind of I guess settled. I was working out in the garage more frequently and you guys have everything. So I even gravitated toward, you know, the barbell, which I 100% prefer um, because it's comfortable. And then I, I was experiencing some injuries. And so part of it was me like, um, you know, stepping back from working out in a group as a way to protect myself from continuing to get injured and feel okay with customizing my workouts. But what I, I haven't talked about this so much, but what I appreciate so much about that time is it allowed me to take ownership of my fitness in a way that I had not had to yet. Um, because I had been relying on a group and I had been relying on a gym full of equipment. Um, and so, 
kind of forcing myself into that um, and only using dumbbells has given me a confidence in my ability to stay consistent and to stay fit and healthy that genuinely in the last eight years of being a fitness professional I have not had, which is like, it makes me want to tear up, honestly. Um, so, and I don't know, I haven't really tested it so much. I don't think I'm any less fit. You know, maybe there's like some, um, like pull, like I don't do pull-ups as frequently, so maybe there's like some grip stamina and stuff that I, I might be lacking in. Um, but otherwise, I mean, we're doing the Oli Moms and I'm hitting weights that I would have hit, you know, four or five years ago. So I can't, I, I'm a believer. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, you know, actually, one of the one of the times where I, I had to use dumbbells a lot too was when I had a, my hand was broken. And... A lot of times people, I've, I've seen comments like recently, even with street parking workouts where they're like, oh, I have like, um, I sprained my wrist so I can't work out. And it's like, excuse me, what, wait, what? Put the dumbbell in the other hand and let it rip, you know? So, um, if you have an injury on one side, especially if it's an upper body injury, the dumb, uh, having access to dumbbells, whether you're using them all the time or just that you have them available. Um, again, it's just another way at convenience, consistency, and Alex's story reminded me of when I was one-handed for at least like two, three months, I think. Um, yeah. So going back to, again, you guys, this is something that I would encourage anyone who wants fitness to be a part of their life at any degree to challenge yourself, challenge your belief system, challenge your comfort level, challenge what you think you need and strip it all the way down to just a pair of dumbbells for an entire month of fitness. Now, if you've got your, you know, rowing program that you're in the middle of, keep that going. If you're in the middle of the Oli Imam focus group, fine, keep that going. But for the, for the main workouts, if you're following street parking for the uh, daily workouts, choose program A or choose shift, grab your dumbbells and find out, find out what this is all about and learn that it's really all that you need because that belief will take you so far where no matter what comes up in your life, no matter how much life happens for you, if you've got the dumbbells um, available to you, you're always gonna know that you have that option and that you can stay in control of your fitness. For me personally, if, I, if someone came and robbed our entire garage gym and left only the dumbbells, I would be extremely sad because I would be less entertained by my fitness, you know, because it's like, okay, well, this is, it's not as exciting and sexy and like, you know, I can choose from the bike and the rower and, or the other bike or the other bike or, you know, like all this stuff. So yeah, I'd be less entertained, but I would not be concerned whatsoever, not even a little tiny bit about losing fitness only being left with a pair of dumbbells. I wouldn't be worried about it at all. So we want you guys to have that belief. We want you guys to have that confidence in yourself and in how simple it can be. And so we challenge you to take control of your fitness, to join us for Project April for one month of only the dumbbells. If you guys wanna learn more about Project April, you can check it out um, at streetparking.com and uh, I know there's going to be maybe a few questions about like what weights do I need or anything like that. So we'll let Nicole throw those in, but uh, you can do it. You can do it. You got to believe. All right. You're right. We do have a couple questions. Um, one is from member Zahira. She asks, I usually do whatever version is in the demo video. It's my way of avoiding too many options. Once Project April is over, should I be going for my dumbbells more often? So we get this question a lot, like, which is the right version of the workout to do? Because we do provide, for those of you that aren't street parking members, every day they'll see um, all of the options in the demo video. So they'll see program A, which is the dumbbells, and program B, which is usually the barbell, and program C, which is like a combination of maybe a sandbag and a bike and a rower, whatever. And people have been conditioned to think that one of those versions has to be the best one. 
So for us, um, that's just not the case. Very, very rarely will we say, if you've got all of the equipment, choose this one. I would say maybe once a month, if that that's true. Um, in general, it depends on where your mind's at. If you're like, I don't feel like working out, watch the demo video and pick the one that sounds the most fun. If you're like, I'm ready to challenge myself, I want to improve, I want to see, you know, what I'm made of, choose the one that you least want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and everything in between, just make sure that you're not picking the same object for the same movements every single time. So you'll notice that sometimes, you know, like I was mentioning before, if I'm pulling it from the ground, I'm always going barbell if I'm trying to stay comfortable. So pay attention to kind of how you're acting when it comes to that. All right, when it comes to trying to work towards increasing the weight that you're using, would it be a good idea to do a few rounds with say the 30s and if you can't keep up the intensity, dropping down to the 25s or would you add in a higher weight even if you can't maintain it throughout the whole workout? I mean, yeah, talk about convenience, right? How easy is it for you to have different selection of weights readily available to you to adjust as opposed to changing weight on a barbell, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, having a, a 25 pound dumbbell for one movement and maybe a heavier weight for another movement might be the way to go instead of sticking with one way to cross. Again, this is kind of like breaking it down based off of your ability. But for the most part, yeah, try to do one round. Um, the good thing is a lot of times we program like interval workouts. So and then based off of the goal time that is provided, if you feel because I mean, it is well written out kind of your pacing and how long certain things should take roughly. So see where you're at. And then don't be afraid to make adjustments as needed. And of course, that all depends on what your purpose for that workout is for that day. So if you're trying to get a good workout based off intensity, yes, make that adjustment. If you purposely went and approach a workout because you wanted to challenge yourself to go a little bit heavier, you're not worried about intensity, and you still can stick within the range of the goal time, do that as well, right? Ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve for this workout? Have a couple of dumbbells ready, readily available and don't be afraid to change. And then just make a note of that. That way, when the workout appears around next time around, you know exactly how to approach it based off of what you did last time. So I would say that maybe the vault workouts might be a good measure. And then of course we have some stuff in the future coming out as well. Um, that might be, you know, that are measurable workouts as well. Just you know, Easter egg there. Lots of Easter eggs today, but it is almost Easter. So uh, what I was going to say too, is you can look at the total volume of reps in a workout. So if it's a super high rep workout or the sets every time are really big, like sets of 30 as opposed to sets of five, um, starting to kind of like dabble in the heavier weights with the lower rep workouts first. Um, and obviously you're going to find right away that you're totally fine with deadlifts, but then you go to push press and you're like, oh man. So, and that's normal. I, I mean, all of us kind of play around with, sometimes I'll use the thirties. Very rarely will I use the 35s. I won't even touch either of those if we're looking at devil press or lunsters or things like that. So, um, you can start to play. There's no right or wrong necessarily. Yeah. And I think this is a good scenario for um applying a heavier weight maybe to the shift rep scheme mm -hmm. because it's generally lower volume like you were saying one thing to point out really quick like what all of you guys are saying is um be deliberate going into it so i encourage people to have a plan if you are going to be adjusting the weights in the middle of the workout like Julian was saying like commit to okay i'm going to do one round or two rounds with one weight and then switch obviously if it's just not happening you make whatever adjustments you need to make on the fly but you don't want to get into the habit of like as soon as it starts to get a little bit challenging just abandoning the the hard stuff and then going towards the the lighter weight we'll take one more when it comes to adjusting um say you have a big gap you're not just going up a little or down a little say you have some light weights and then some really heavy weights how would you recommend they either adjust with reps or weight to accommodate let's say you've got 15 pound dumbbells and then you've got 40s at your house which i mean that that's definitely like if you if you're just like rummaging around your you know your basement and that's what you find because you know that's what you had when you were in high school or something like that and everything's sold out because there's a dumbbell the great dumbbell shortage of 2020 and you want to do street parking you're like these 15s are too light but these 40s 
that's not happening. Like it's too heavy. You can start to play around with some single dumbbell options as well. So a lot of times, especially in the shift demos, we'll show um, squats, for example, where you've got a dumbbell in each hand here, or you're holding one here in like a goblet position, or you're pressing two dumbbells, or you're pressing just one. Um, again, it's going to be movement specific. You might be fine with the 40s if you're just doing deadlifts. And then if there's thrusters in the workout too, you go ahead and pick up the 15s or you pick up just the single 40 or something like that. Um, and also, let's go back to consistency is the most important thing. So if the thrusters are a little bit too easy for you and you're in the middle of like waiting for, you know, rep fitness to send you a notification that their dumbbells are back in stock, you don't just not work out because you don't have the weight that you wish that you had. You're going to gain more fitness by using the 15s or, or lowering the reps and using the 40s or using a single 40 for some of the movements. You're going to gain a lot more fitness doing that than just waiting until you have the weights that you wish that you had. Um, so you can mix and match and play around with and start to, to do some single dumbbell stuff though, if you have like a big gap in between the range. And that's where I would kind of start. With that said, before Julian kicks us off, you know, and says that we're going to wrap this up and like, and subscribe and all that stuff. I know, I know his, I know his lines. Um, we do get the question a lot whenever we post about Project April on pages that um, non-street parking members are see. I, we see a lot of questions in the comments of what weights do you guys normally suggest? Um, that's very personal, obviously. Depends on where how strong you are right now, what your experience level is with these types of movements and with dumbbells in general. However, the range that I, we would usually suggest um, is probably somewhere between like 15-pound dumbbells to 35-pound dumbbells for the women. And again, I mentioned about five minutes ago that I very rarely pick up the 35s. So that's going to be on the heaviest end of what you would need for street parking workouts if you're really strong and really fit. Um, most of the workouts, you'll see women using 20, 25 pound dumbbells. And again, if you're newer or you're not super experienced, 15s, maybe even 12s or 10s might be right for you. For the guys, you're going to see anywhere between like 30 pounds to 50 pounds. And again, even Julian very rarely will grab the 50s for most of our street parking workouts. Typically, you'll see the guys 35 to 45 pounds that they're using. Um, so I wanted to kind of throw that range out there because we do get that question a lot. And with program A, if all you can get your hands on right now is a light pair of kettlebells or even a single kettlebell. All of the workouts can be done with a single kettlebell or a light pair of kettlebells as well. So if you are stuck in the great dumbbell shortage of 2020 slash 2021 um, and that's all you've got or that's all you can find, that will work too. Go for it. All right. And that wraps up this week's episode of the Coaches Roundtable. Remember, guys, if you have any information that you want to share with your friends, feel free to share this video, like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube page as well, and we'll check in with you guys next time.